message. It was a pre-prepared message announcing that the art faculty had suddenly come around and consented to submitting reinvention proposals after they called them coercive. No, the message was prepared. I was in the meeting. She said, I have an early revision of Jim Shedd's message. Okay. The way the new programs evolved, all three faculties were developing these programs. In fact, the art faculty uh, was very well along and developed some fantastic programs. The process was subtly coercive. What part of that is not clear? They were stronger. Early admission was deferred. They were threatened with closure. Would you let me finish? Sure. Uh, once the, the programs were developed, which include the master's in design practice, a few other programs the other schools developed, in fact, a document had been prepared. And in fact, I was I was asked by Jenny if I could have, allow the faculty to present the program directly to the trustees, not through me. Well, uh, and I arranged a trustee meeting uh, just focused on faculty members presenting, needs of faculty members presenting directly to the board because the faculty was interested in persuading the board that these new programs were actually effective and would bring in money that might keep the undergraduate program free. Well, we, that meeting, unfortunately, was, a, was disruptive. Nevertheless, the trustees really thought the art faculty's proposal was actually done. So you can imagine, not the art faculty. <coughs> well, they were presenting it to the board. They, they were presenting it to the board. Okay. Not Why because they, they wanted to. What? Not because they wanted to. Well, you haven't answered my question. <coughs> I think we should move on anyway, unless you have more to say. I have a lot more to say. OK. Let me say it. Sure. OK. There was a committee working on those programs. Jenny, I believe you want those. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Uh, the, the faculty. <laughs> the faculty didn't want to work on it, but they were forced into working on it. So can you answer Casey's question? No, you know, that's 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 entirely accurate. Subtly coercive. Oh, we almost addressed it. Right? <laughs> we almost addressed it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, well, that's that's not accurate. There were faculty champions who were almost doing that. Subtly coercive. Subtly. Okay, see, the, you know, the coercive thing, the allegation came later. <laughs> Let me finish. Sure, sorry. There were faculty champions for all of those programs. Uh, I cannot come up with new programs for art, neither can the revenue task force, neither can the trustees, which is why I asked each faculty to think and imagine on their own. And uh, revenue generating programs. Yes. And that, that more revenue they generated, that the, the higher the scholarships, the less uh, threatened the undergraduate nutrition will be. I mean, <coughs> precisely what you're suggesting is that you have more of that than you have. Uh, and in fact, the architecture school suggested uh, uh, that through their master's program and other programs they could. I don't think that I'm suggesting that, because that is that other tuition based master's program. So what happened there uh, was the, after presenting the program to the board of trustees, when the meeting was disrupted, and students at the uh, voted to uh, not have any tuition even at the graduate level, the faculty reversed or, or voted not to, not to adopt the program. That's what happened. And the trustees viewed as well that we don't have a we don't have the funding. We don't have a way to think about uh, funding because these programs are going to provide the funding for free tuition for the next time. So the class can't be admitted if you don't have the funding for the year. That was that was really I think part of the reason why we're all here is because it's not that uh, the faculty are
Well, have you been I mean, you, you deferred to TC Westcott on that, actually. I watched the stream. Why were the bathrooms and the water fountains yeah. sealed? Why were guards blocking all the escape stairs? I was not allowed to, on the third floor, I was not allowed to enter any stairs with people on the stairs. Can you say that again after this? I'll just be cat. Thank you. Why were they? Sorry. I don't. I don't want to. You did point your questions in the very well. You didn't answer them. Yeah, would you like to ask? I would like to ask. 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 I would like to was to prevent entry, but not to prevent exit. That's what the institution was. But our personnel were not able to control the entry, and the emergency management team set up a system where they could try to create the appropriate channels so that people who wanted to come out could come out without the people coming in. How was so locking and barring the bathrooms an appropriate channel for students? And threatening students with dismissal. Yes, yeah, please, please justify that you would threaten dismissal and threaten to to not allow us to graduate before coming up and trying to solve the problem yourself. <laughs> Were hurt too. Gloria was hurt upon the occupation at the beginning of the occupation. Gloria stuck her hand behind a student after he was standing at the door. We have video. We're okay. not blaming we Gloria. We're not blaming Gloria. Not blaming she not blaming was hurt. She asked you not to. You, 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 the code of conduct requires that you follow the instructions. The code of conduct requires that we not be here. Code of conduct requires that no guns be in the building. Mm. Yeah. 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 And the code of conduct also requires you show up at work. The mission of my the question question would you like me to ask? All okay. I know is you've, been asked, you've been asked this question several times about why the bathroom and the fountain were boarded shut and you still have not answered. I, I don't know the answer. Why don't you say sorry? That's it. It's not so That's not a small thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when your students' bodies are put in danger, you as a president should not I should give the address. But, but, but you interrupted me. I was in the middle. Why is it not okay for me to talk about Gloria? Why is it not? You know, what? what? Gloria. Because Gloria is not. I'm not sure why. We need video, video addressing that. We need you to address why you blocked the fire. I'm sorry. I was answering the question why I didn't come out. Mm -hmm. Let him talk. Initially, yes, I was upset. Because Gloria was upset. Where is that? Are you upset? You know, <laughs> Peter Cooper is always in the Guys, stop. Peter Cooper is not going to be 
Okay, okay so Gloria was hurt, but then I was upset, and frankly, uh, uh, I'm still upset about that. And I know you're upset about your other things, but what is the relationship between Gloria and the water fountains and the bathroom? Stacey, that there was no relationship. Okay. I have a question. I'm sorry, it's about the frame of this conversation. I was wondering if everybody in this room would be okay with me moderating it. Seeing this clearly, seeing this clearly, it's not. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. So the water is out there. So yeah, after Gloria, I'm upset. I I'm I'm here now, and if you think this is a moment, let me say that. You're not answering the question. So you cannot act beyond emotion. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Emotions That's take right. over you, and then leadership goes out the window. Finish about Gloria. Finish saying this thing about Gloria. Who is his secretary who stays in the front room to clarify for anyone who doesn't know? Right? Is that correct? Yes. Has she filed an injury complaint with the union? I don't believe she union. The union rep said no. The union rep was here and she said no, she has not filed it. I don't believe she's in the decision. No, she's in the decision. That was just shitty. Gloria, you were upset. Bad things happened. Like, so you claim some responsibility for it, but not really. Look, I'm. It's okay. It's okay. You don't want to admit it. We got it. The office without taking it off, or he said, This group wants to come and talk to me. That, and you know, we would have done it. I, was yeah. doing right now. Okay. I, I, I disagree that we could have had this conversation without taking over. I haven't been as involved as Victoria and Casey and some others, but I believe that when they told me that they've been trying for over a year now to have it and it hasn't been as productive as I feel like tonight actually is, if when you evaluate in the morning. Um, and I'd like to read something from Mr. Block, a uh, senior electrical engineer who's at Stuyvesant last week, um, just in regards to prospective students and their parents and how they're viewing Cooper Union, because um, a lot of Stuyvesant students come here. So this is Mr. Block. I recently represented Cooper Union at the college night at Stuyvesant High School, a high school which represents at least 10% of the engineering student body. Michael says, I have done this service for the past four years. Unlike past years, in which I met crowded classrooms, this year, classes had less than half the number of students. College Night offers five sessions for students to look at their top five colleges. In one particular session, not a single person showed up. In others, students' mouths opened, and they left the moment I mentioned that there would be tuition, and they would be the first class ever to pay such tuition. President Bruca. With all due respect, how can you not see the effect that tuition will have on our student body? I have a question for Facebook also. Pardon? I have a question for Facebook also. Uh, now that yeah, wait, you, can, you can see the effect, but I guess to add one thing, what do you propose to do with it? Open ended question. The other question is what's the alternative? But I think you're going to be a lot about your business. I think that you are. Black, you've got a student ethos that's equal to none. Uh, and that many, many students like you, really, really talented, creative, you want an atmosphere without the frills that's focused, where you focus on your work and work in teams at Harvard to learn, close contact with faculty. Many, many students will continue to be very, very He's showing how they're not. not. Not the students that will have to pay. I grant everybody on the board grants that this is going to be a challenge, which is why, you know, we, we're not doing this because we want, you know, as a college president, every college president wants, above all, to have the best possible students. Above all, to have the best possible students. There's no and the best better. possible pay. So much for interruption. Uh, every college president wants us to have, you know, wants to have the best possible students. Why would I want to take on a challenge like that? It's just that we haven't seen a model that works 
and prevents us from going off of this whole question. I, I'm happy to, to look at, we can look at these models at any time. We can go back and look at the way forward if you want. We can go back to other models. We have actually, we published the financial aid here, which talks about the way forward. But if you have other ideas, let's look at it. But they have to add to those have to add. We talked about how you won't do that, but okay. It's um, another I, line from your statement. I just have a, I have a question for are you, are you John. Go ahead, John. I have a question for Don, and you're also a trustee member, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. So you told me that this, this problem has happened since five presidents ago. And who elects the president? The trustees, right? Why should you guys be, why should you continue to be allowed to elect the president if you're clearly not really put in the situation? Well, there's been five presidents, but the, the same board didn't elect five presidents. Uh, there's very few people who even were involved with Campbell at this point. There's 11 or 12 trustees who've left the board in the last two years. So the current board has been involved with Dr. Marusha, but not at all with the prior. Uh, if you want to second guess a decision, whether Dr. Marusha is right or wrong, I don't think I've heard a lot of opinions that say he's not the wrong guy necessarily but maybe doing some of the wrong things in the opinion of the speaking body. Uh, I do, I've stayed out of this, but I do have to make a statement that the board, as we told you, was not unanimous in these decisions. A decision is made at a moment in time under certain circumstances. That, division is not, that decision is not forever. It's not irrevocable. And I feel we have constantly have to evaluate and look for alternatives that can work. As, as John should have said and, and Don has said, everybody wants to keep the school free. There was nobody on the board jumping up and down and saying, we've got to charge tuition. So the question is, we've got to come up with a plan that works. And as far as I'm concerned, we haven't stopped trying. I haven't stopped trying. I just so think you, need, you I said, Ray, it, it wasn't the same board all this time, but who has left? Board is constantly evolving. Who has been the chairman for the last, uh, how long has been Mr. Epstein the chairman? About four, three or four years. Three or four years. I've been on the board for four years. I'm sorry to interrupt, but he didn't say the people on the board. He said the board. Yeah. 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 Has there been any changes to the structure of the board? There's been different board members, but we're saying that there's been problems within the board. (coughs) You're saying that these Every time you have a different board, there are different people. What makes this question? The structure of the board. We've been talking about in, like employing different models where you can have faculty be involved. And students have literally been nearly begging to be um, like members or just at least present. So why has there been no effort to have a structural change in the way that the democracy of the board is run? We all know that there's term limits, but that doesn't seem to really make any difference. In the so what is the structural change? Are you suggesting a change? Wait, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm I'm a, a faculty member who gave a really beautiful and like very thoroughly investigated option that she says that she has been emailing the president about for months. No, 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 no. Can someone, all right, someone please, I hope can. She's talking about the Senate, right? Oh, I don't know. Well, but I, I actually, can I ask a follow-up? Because downstairs, I asked you guys a question. You didn't answer my question at all. You went on some other tangents. It was basically, why, what gives us incentive to trust you more than those other trustees who are trusted by the Cooper Union community? And what are the tools that we can use to like hold you accountable for your decisions? And I just want a list of tools. Like, I don't want we make right decisions or we didn't make those decisions, I want you to tell us how we are supposed to trust you, how you are held accountable to the decisions you make. I mean, the only thing that I can tell you is that I'm an alum, I was where you are, I got a free education, you're gonna get a free education, we want everybody hereafter to have a free education. I don't know what else I can tell you. And that, and that furthermore, apropos of the guy in the back who said, where were you when, you know, I've been doing this, I've been doing this. Do you listen to working, that's not what he asked. That's not what he asked. Whatever he is. You, you just <laughs> point the point I want is, I've been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been working for Cooper Union without compensation. Now, I, I've also been an adjunct professor for 25 years. That seems to be a very good point. The point is, the point is that, that I, I'm trying to find a way to explain, you know, I don't, I don't know how you can trust somebody. You don't know me, I don't really know you. And I'm trying to tell you what what the 
what the parameters are that might give you reason to trust me. I don't know what else I a can good, tell you to trust A good example is Mark Epstein. When he announced the tuition decision, he told us that he had no regrets, not one regret about what has happened on the board in the past few years. That's not not one. I don't no. think that's true. I don't he think that's true. Wait, 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 a wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know he has a regret. I have a regret. I don't have to make the board decision. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. He's the chairman of the board. He's an alumni. Of all three schools. Of all three schools. <laughs> he has told us that he has no regrets. And he was speaking in that, to our knowledge, as agency of the board. Because he was telling us your decision. Well, so, but I'm, I'm speaking it's to the myself. same issue. <coughs> but I we don't hear you. Why are you your It's not what I want. I it's not what I want. How do, how do I make you believe that? How do I make you trust me? I don't know. But you're one person. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. To jump off of that. There are a lot of people that disagree with how you've been governing the school. We, I think this is maybe both to what you, what uh, was being said, is what are the tools that we can use to check your power? How can we, what avenues are present already, or that need, yeah, that are present already that we can check and make sure we can decide who is voted to our board, who stays on our board. Why can't we make sure Jamsha gets out tonight? Why, or what avenues do I have to take to make sure he's no longer president? These are my opinions, I dislike him. But I just want to know what steps, if this, since I feel this is the only way I've been able to have this conversation by occupying this space, I want to know what you guys would consider, what are the next steps that I need to take to make sure he's no longer the president of this school? Well, I can't help you there. So those, 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 those steps don't exist. Just say it, they don't exist? Well, they don't exist, but even if they did, it's not something I so would So what, to. would you have liked to stop some of those decisions that were made in the past that you dislike. Absolutely. How would you do that? If you were, if you had knowledge of them now, back then, how would you do that as a member of the, the Uber? The only way I can do it is what we're doing right now, only with a smaller group. We have, <laughs> what, 22 or 24 people on the board. We, we sit here just like we're doing now, to a certain extent, with some of you anyway. And, and arguing. But if you were not on the board, if you were exactly an alumni, the, how, how we if you were an alumni, part of the Cooper community, and you had an understanding of the bad decisions the board was making, what would you do back then to stop the board? What is in? What would be in your power? Are you, are you talking when? Are you talking specifically about the decision to institute tuition? No, I am not talking. You're talking about, about other decisions. I'm talking about the decision you, you tell us are the mistakes that you know they've made in the past. These like vague. They made mistakes. They're not they, I mean, it's de decisions to well, sell the building, decisions to build a new building, things like that. I happen to not be on the board at that time. But so what would you do? What What do you think we could have done about that when they were making when those bad we, decisions? When, well, wait a minute. You, 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 you're talking about alumni. Well, first of all, half the board, half the board is alumni. Oh my God. Are you not aware of that? That half the board is alumni. Besides the point, right? Can I ask the question? I think we should consider that these decisions, that these decisions are made behind closed doors and we don't know. Speak up a little. These decisions are made behind closed doors and we don't know what's going on. You need to consider a restructure of government. And every board is behind closed doors. Wow. You need to stop comparing Cooper to other schools. It's not other schools. I'm just talking about other you know, schools. I didn't get the job done. You know. As long as the people behind those closed doors make the right decision, they're allowed to keep the doors closed, all right? Listen, I don't think you guys are the, the bad guys here, you know? I don't. And listen, I, guess, I don't. I'm speaking for myself, all right? It's, I, don't, I don't really think anyone made these decisions because they thought that it was going to bankrupt the school and they had a malevolent view of the thing. Right. They made the, the decisions because they misunderstood the situation they were in. Because they misunderstood. I don't think it was that simple. I think there are other issues involved. Ego and other things like okay, that. Ego, Reputations of people who are coming out of the ego who want to be behind the legacy. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Without getting into a lot of psychological stuff, there could be other reasons. You know, but let's, let's start with the assumption that they, they didn't mean what they did. That's what you said. So, there are lots of ego, personal power plays, and stuff. I don't think there's any fraudulent. I would like to hope not. But, but that's why I was that's why I limited you know my accusations to a misunderstanding of the situation. And nothing so incriminating as an ego play or a power play or something fraudulent. They misunderstood the situation. They thought that by building this building, 
They could draw in a big donor, <coughs> right? They are, and, and that would... It's, you know, again, you know, it's not that simple. It was a problem. I mean, you have to look at the right. entire picture. Listen. I don't want to get into it because I wasn't there. All right. I only know what I heard the way you heard. I'm trying to make a philosophical point, all right? Go ahead. Listen, we all, we've all gotten into it independently with you otherwise, all right? We made a mistake here, all right? And this is the first time we've had anyone from the board or the administration acknowledge that. And I think that's a big deal. And I thank you for it. So if you made that mistake and it wasn't malevolence, it was an inability for some people, you or other people, to understand the circumstance and how they need to act in the best interest of the school. Now you, we are currently at another moment of great decision. And you have repeatedly said that we don't have any options to move forward and, and sustain the Cooper Union. No. And, and I would like to agree with that statement. No, because let me, the option let me, let me, that you no, no, no. Listen, there's been too much interruption in this room. <laughs> I think that the moment we're at now requires a, a more careful address considering the mistakes we've made in the past. You have refused the validity or to see the potential validity of many programs that have been proposed from all, from all over the community and elsewhere. <coughs> you have you have you've looked at them, you've you've brought an analyst, you've done you've done different run the numbers on them, but they don't seem financially viable. But when you ran the numbers on this project and development ran the numbers and speculated, they thought that was viable. The truth is there's no way to see the future, particularly in a world that's changing as rapidly as ours is. Right. All right? And right. I'm not going to fault you for failing to see, or not you, or whoever it was, for failing to see that this was a bad decision that was obvious to a large amount of community. What I'm saying yeah. is that right now, I think you're about to make a <coughs> failure of equal magnitude, and it's not done. And the reasons are not uh, purely philosophical, they're also financial. We cannot afford to, to gamble on selling the school as a business right now. We can't afford it financially, all right? I don't understand with such a weak vision, with such a, a financially unstable, look at the numbers, financially unfeasible vision, how you can disregard the other options. Yes, the other options require that by realigning the mission, we could find other sources of revenue from outside donors. Your position also requires that. We need to acknowledge that none of us can see the way out of this, and that the vision you're proposing is not viable. Then, maybe as a group, we could collectively figure out what we do need to do to move forward. Why should the same group of people who made the mistakes that ran this into the ground, the mistakes which have now been enumerated in the media, mm -hmm. the mistakes in heavily investing in hedge funds and high fee structured investments, in investing in a building that has nothing to do with the image uh, idea of the school at $170 million. The facade alone could have paid for how many scholarships at $10 million? I mean, why should we allow the same people who, whose vision has already failed to tell us that none of these other options are viable? <coughs> because Or the structure is by hand that a long time. No, I want to hear an answer to that. No, I, I, I want to. I want to take a comment. I don't know if it's an answer, but it's a comment that you're you're uh, not observing the entire picture here, because you have to take into consideration what was the status of the engineering building at the time. Now, I'm not, I don't want to defend this whole thing because I wasn't part of it. I, I'm I'm an alumnus. It's not my metier. I'm an artist, not a, you know, fort finance is not my fort, I, I'll say that, you know, so but, I'm, I can, but I'm a businessman, I have my own business, and I, and I do, and I do listen to <coughs> the numbers, so, so I can only tell you what I myself have learned, that, that the, that the uh, uh, engineering building was totally outdated, engineering is a, is a you know, is a, is a cutting, <coughs> cutting edge art, and, and that, that they needed to either put a lot of money into it, or do what they Listen, did over there. Fall back I can't on this second right guess. Listen, I came, when I came to school, I had classes in that engineering building. And this building was a hole in the ground. And I felt a lot more in line with the vision of this school at that point. And I wish I was still having classes in that degraded building, but without, you know, I'm not able to, 
fulfill my obligations as a student right now because the future, because I, we all feel that we're fighting for the life of this institution. Yeah, it's nice to have a flashy new building with nice facilities, but that's not what this place is about. If you want nice facilities, there are hundreds of schools with tuition-based models that can provide you all the bells and whistles, all right? We're not competing on the same <coughs> ground here. To, to do so, to fall back on that rhetoric, is to misunderstand what the value of this place is. And we cannot afford those types of misunderstandings anymore. But I understand that. I went here when there was no flashy building. It wasn't even an engineering building. There was no gym. There was no nothing. And by the way, I went to the same kind of high school. The high school I went to was a civil war. I came here for the president. So we came here for the president. I'm sorry. We understand. Those of us who, who went here then understand that what, what the character and personality of Cooper Union is. But the decisions you're making don't reflect it. I don't understand that. I think we need something to call hands. Yes. 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 Can you Wait, sorry. You expressed um, kind of a question that I'd like to answer when you asked why this body of people couldn't have signed up and met with you in your office under more <coughs> regular circumstances than this. And I think, at least for me, and I can't necessarily speak for everyone as a whole, this meeting was not the goal of that action. This meeting is a side note of that action. That action was because, as Sebastian said, there are no actual channels through which we can express the fact that 2,400 people and counting have no confidence in you as the president of this school, not personally, but as the leadership leader of the Cooper Union. This isn't about this conversation, as great as it may be. It's about that action and that feeling within this institution. <coughs> so, and, and that's fair enough. Uh, but I mean, my coming up here uh, is to interact with and. Uh, you're coming up here is to reevaluate the condition of the school and what we can do. It's not just to interact. It's not a PR. You're telling me about the people who signed the no confidence board. I know the number of people who signed it. Sorry, so, I'm not sure uh, what you said. I would, I would like to focus the conversation now and, and, and uh, going forward on if you think there are alternatives, I want to sit down with you and look at the alternatives. We always want to look at alternatives. What we have to do, though, is they have to be they have to be looked at analytically. The way forward has some great ideas. We implemented some of them. The, the, the $4 million cut is, in fact, uh, in line with the kind of trust that the way forward uh, suggests. Uh, the uh, raising money from foundations is one of the things that the way forward proposes. Uh, we do that. We raised a million dollars almost last year from foundations. The, the problem is that it takes us only to 2018 and not beyond. <coughs> one of the reasons you asked about past boards and past administrations is that many of the decisions, for example, Southern Green for the Green Camp, which I personally have not think probably was unfortunate, many of those decisions were made in order to protect the Green Camp. That's why they were made. They were made because people said, cut costs, do anything, anything to preserve the Green Camp. And so, were those bad decisions? Who knows? Those were some of those were decisions that were extremely well intentioned uh, and uh, closing the physics degree program was part of downsides and closing athletics uh, was part of downsides. And these were all, not all, but <coughs> decisions, I think were probably well intentioned decisions to try to cut costs to protect the free tuition, which is exactly what, what many of you are suggesting is just that we cut a lot of those costs. We've gotten rid of a lot of our assets, and there aren't a lot more to I'm sorry, I feel like you're not answering it. I don't even know if it wasn't your question. question. You but, okay. there were 2,400. Yes, and thank you. I know. Yes, but what I'm saying is that that narrative that you just gave back to me for the fifth time this evening. I'm sorry. No, I okay, then you know. I'll try and correct no, my time. That's I don't it. think you'll find I told you about Green Cap ever before this evening. You, you said, said yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, but 
that narrative that everything has been tried and we're not willing to sacrifice, and all of these things have been brought up in the eons of great hall meetings that I personally have attended because I really care, and I'm sure everyone here really cares. But that has been spoken to already. There was nothing in that statement that I think was truly new or deviated from the vision that you suggested. And yet, those people still signed that vote of no confidence. I'm asking for something new that is a response to that. Can I, can I uh, make a comment? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is about communication? With John No. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, what, like to bounce off of Lauren's point, something that's made me feel very uncomfortable for a very long time now is the fact that going back to the structure of the board, I'm not sure how comfortable I am to have people who I suppose they have a connection to the school. Someone did mention that half of them are alumni, but they are out of our context. <coughs> they are not within this school context. They are not students here. And the fact that we are not represented on this board is just mind-boggling because we are the largest constituent of this school. How come we don't have representation? told me earlier, uh, an authentic engineering student, I helped build that Taurus, and I've used this wonderful education here to uh, use mathematics to analyze risk. And I can look at the way forward and see from that that we have about five years of relative safety. And I think that you've mentioned that we do not, that you and the Board of Trustees do not see a better way forward after those five years. I think the reason we're gathered here is because we agree that you and the board lack the creativity to do such a thing. I think the reason we're here is because we want to take those five years and bet on someone else who is possibly more creative than you and more inspired than you and the board of trustees to handle this very specific problem that we are set forward with. It's not impossible. We and Cooper are here to solve impossible problems. I just feel that we're met with people who are almost against even trying. We, we have five years that we can try incredibly complicated and incredibly beautiful and innovative things, and you completely shut that down with tuition. And I'm wondering why that's the case. But I guess, I guess perhaps my point is, if someone came to me and said, can you build me uh, a world-class website, I would say, no, I can't. I will point you to someone at this school who is far more talented than I am. And if someone presents to you, can you save us from the problem we have without destroying the fundamental thing that is our core, I would say I can't do that. I don't understand why you aren't willing to say, I cannot solve this problem. Allow me to point to someone more competent to do so. Just spoke to you. <laughs> All of <mine. laughs> Okay. 
Well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until we actually have the first. We have your office. I just think that there is something to be said in that after there were 30 students in this office and we were told to leave, we were told that, that access to the seventh and eighth floor could be, the seventh and eighth floors would not be accessible and that students risk expulsion and, um, and not earning their degree. That after that, still more than 70 students came into this room. I'm saying after more than 70, also from the 30 that were here. Um, I would like to know and there's more than 100. There are more than 100 people who risk expulsion to sit in this office, and I think that if people are willing to to go through that risk or are willing to risk that, there's something to be said in that, and if. We're going to ignore that all these students did this. It's I, I'm gonna I'm like gonna lose so much faith in this like institution. There's a structural issue with so many students are willing to risk their own degree for the sake of their school, and and still and there's 2,400 signatures and nobody is still helping anyone to find a way to channel that voice like to formally. <coughs> I I think it's an issue and regardless of whether you are president or someone else is our president, there is an issue in that. There's not a way for us to, for us as a student body to voice our opinion other than coming in here and sitting in your office and like having to get people to sign a petition, like you know, to sign a vote of no confidence. I think it's absurd and I think it's disappointing. And I understand that maybe that's like how other schools do things, but like I don't think that's relevant at all to how Cooper Union runs itself. And I think that it's disappointing that that this can go ignored formally, that it can. And I think that's something that needs to change regardless of where president is, regardless of what happens after this. This needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be formally addressed. And we need to talk about the fact that there are so many students who are so upset of how things are being run here. And that it's that, that there's a possibility that, that can just go ignored. I, I find that very disappointing.
you, you started out addressing the bathroom doors and water fountains being boarded up by saying you didn't think that was a good idea. If you had been here during the situation, you could have stopped them from doing that, but you weren't. And you weren't here four days after that. I think that really says a lot. The bolt's still on the door. You said that you did that to stop people from entering the seventh floor. When do people enter from the water fountain in the bathroom? <laughs> That's a siege tactic. That's completely illegal. <laughs> subordinates and the people around you can make the right calls. Um, in that situation, and I think in a lot of other situations on a grander scale, I think you've been trusting the wrong people. No. no. Not only that, but... throw them all under the bus. Yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold somebody I accountable. Matter, I think it's a matter of the people around you. It's not. <laughs> it's the other way around. I, let me do for a minute. I think it's a matter of the people around you not coming up with our ideas, and you not coming up with our ideas, and together there's a collection of people who are all not coming up with our ideas. I think there's a group of people here. To take accountability. Exactly. No, I think it's completely your responsibility. I'm not trying to shirk that off on anybody else. But I think if you had surrounded yourself with some people who had some better ideas, I think everybody in the room and the faculty who are also present in the room, um, I think that a lot better actions could have been taken. And I think that some form of shared governance, some form of different structure, some form of power structure that shares power, not just across you and the people you're trusting, but across the whole school. I think situations like that could have been avoided. I think tuition could be avoided. It's a matter of structure, I think. You got the wrong structure. Yes, we had a hand up here in the back of the screen. Just because we're in a meeting space for the first time, and I don't know ever, there's a chalkboard here also, and a lot of like the most brilliant minds in, you know, the 20 to 30 age range in America in here right now. Um, I personally voted for the no confidence clause, but in order to move me from like zero to maybe one percent, it would be nice to see five at least five items written on the board that you will personally pursue uh, as of right now to. Uh, to create like a structural conduit for us to have a relationship with administration. Um, and that could go a very long way because I think what a lot of things have been swept under the rug and are continuing to be swept under the rug is hiding behind a, like a thick scrim of uh, rhetoric. Um, and so in order to see those things, I don't know what's being written right now, why they're like diagrammatic or whatever, just five I think is a very, very small number. Um, that we can hold you accountable for from this moment forward. Like number one is a student on the board. Voting or the board and faculty. Checks and balances. Two from each school. Two from each school. Yeah. I'm 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 promising at least there's going to be a board. Can you confirm what points there is? Guys, guys. I think you asked about also students. Uh, governance, vis-a-vis -vis the administration, is that what you asked about? Me personally? Yeah, I mean you said board and administration, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I would love to have a, I know we have a student council, but I would love to have a group of elected students <coughs> who I meet with, uh, where I could share ideas, and they could share ideas with me, uh, and that makes recommendations about things that we can do on behalf of the students. What would you call that? The Associates of Cooper Union? Pardon? The Associates? But it's not just about recommendations, it's also about making decisions. It's about making decisions. It should also have faculty too. Yeah. Because we've made recommendations and they've just been ignored. Well, that's the, the student faculty, that's the center. It's all the center. No. It's <laughs> dysfunctional. The center is part of the center. The center was designed uh, to advise the administration. There are plenty of advisory bodies. Many have sprung up since you've been here. I mean, we could make five more of them, maybe. But I think the problem is, is that as much advice and as, as much uh, agency, or as much accountability you place <coughs> for solving this problem on the students and the faculty in the school and open up avenues to discuss it, those people have no agency in enacting uh, that vision of the school. 
So regardless of how many uh, bodies you have meeting to uh, discuss alternative programs, you are in a mindset which has predetermined that those are not financially feasible because, and, and chooses a model which is, I believe, not financially feasible as the only viable option forward. So the problem is not just the advisory role, but it's the lack of agency amongst the people who are asking to give their time in coming up with solutions. Can I follow up on my comment, just because we've only, I think we only have one or two items written. I did attend a meeting here, I'm not a student council representative, but I was asked to represent like the architecture school at the table. I think unfortunately your father-in-law had passed that day we were supposed to have a meeting, or recently. Um, and we sat there and it was basically like one wall talking to another wall, or rather a wall being put in the face of many students. And so I think in order to really like bring structural agency and legitimacy to everything that's being suggested, there has to be some sort of um, record keeping that has some sort of recourse, for instance. So we came prepared with minutes. I don't know if they were submitted to any official log of the schools. We weren't given any. I would like to have these I would like to have these meetings have some more agency just like the board meetings. So I think the minutes should be recorded. I think they should be ratified by both sides. I think they should be inserted into the record of Cooper Union. Um, and, and I mean so I, again, I don't want like overarching sort of rhetorical things or you know this like assumption that communication already exists. But I guess you, because you are our administrative leader as well as a president, yeah, so. to tell us specifically what sort of things need to happen for this to be an actual thing and not just you know something to get us out of here. Right, so another thing that I would certainly uh, love to see is student assembly. Now you have student council, uh, but. It would be very nice if we, if we instead of just with the actions, those are the meetings for the actions, uh, but with the entire council in the way, and we would like this. What executive agency would that body have? Well, what would you like to have? Votes. 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 Votes on the board. <laughs> Votes on the board. What are you laughing at? That's it, right? What are you laughing at? Sorry, I'm not laughing at that. I'm, uh, it's a revolutionary notion. It's not revolutionary, it's normal. Well, it's normal, it's not revolutionary to have students on the board. That I already said, I already said that was the first item. And faculty. She wanted five. That's one. Students, it's one. We want faculty to number two. Oh, no, no, no. Faculty is one. one. I just like one. Let's get, let's get one. And I actually, she asked me for my name. Yeah, but she said Give him a chart. Give him a chart. Give him a chart. And let him write out. Finish. No, man. I don't know about it. Byron, what were you saying? So uh, you stated that you support um, voting students and faculty members of the board. Uh, would you support, uh, within the bounds of legality, of course, publicly uh, recorded and available board minute meetings? Aren't they already supposed to do that? They're supposed to, but they haven't. Okay, so I support actually, and work for I actually do have a proposal. I would like uh, the board to be accountable for failing to provide board reports which are supposed to be issued quarterly. I would like there to be some sort, not, I mean, we're not talking in terms of penalty, but I would like there to be some sort of measure that would actually enforce transparency through the issue of those reports as the board is required to do. I think that's not that. You're talking about, I mean, um, last year when I talked about the teaching for the financial reports, on where we are, and we were talking the right of it, and I think you're talking about board reports, I mean, right, there are different subcommittees within the board, and I think it's important to understand uh, how each of those subcommittees and how the board as a whole is positioned in the future of Cooper and what they are doing individually in terms of the matters they're dealing with and what they're reporting for them. Can everybody be really clear about which things I'm supposed to write? Live, jumping around. Perhaps, President should be really clear about which things you should write. Oh, 
Can you explain why not faculty on the board? Yeah, put that down Can you explain why not faculty on the board? No question. The board will have to decide whether the board should come up. I'm saying that we will have representation. Can you just explain why faculty cannot be on the board? Well, actually, I have, I have just a super duper tiny quick question. What does representation mean, really, if they're not voting? Yeah, we're asking, we're asking for votes. It seems like, it seems like, it seems like we're, we're, we're getting nowhere here. We're yeah, not doing like, any we're compromise. Not and not we have any regards to this tuition. We have any regards to And all you can do is just laugh at us. That is disrespectful. Stop laughing. Yes, you are laughing. I can see with my own eyes that you're laughing. I don't laugh in your face. Why can't the student have voting power? I did. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let me. Why can't the student? I'm, I'm not saying the student can't have voting power. I'm saying all I pledge is that we're going to have a student representative. And, and, and why can't faculty? One of the One of the factors is the board is a large body, and the board will have to vote on whether it wants to be a voting question or not. In terms of faculty, they didn't say we can't have faculty. But well, what, what will you fight for? Okay. If you want to run the school like this every other school, will only grow if you continue, continue to address this like that. Because you will continue everyone. I, I believe that people will lose more and more confidence in you if you continue to address this like this. So if you do not take it seriously and you keep laughing, you will see more and more people here. So perhaps we, we could propose five items and you could go back to the board and the, and the school to decide if they're able to institute those. And then the people in this room can decide if that satisfies them. Well, I don't like how you're talking about the board I, like some weird, like, exactly. intergalactic group. <laughs> I think the board can sit in here, and yeah. we can provide representatives yeah. for this sort of meeting to occur with them. Because if you're one voting member, you, I don't know if you're, like, the shortest running member. I'm not, I'm, I don't know the full history. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that it does fall on you, even though you are the president. So. Can we resolve to have that sort of open dialogue that's been forced open by the occupiers with them so that we can present our resolutions and they can, like, in the immediate sense, not through, like, several email conduits and, like, he said, she said information, actually come up with these resolutions and enact them? Because the thing is that we're in a, we're in, we're in a crisis, and so, like, structural norms are not going to work here, obviously. And so, like, even if this is something that we can ratify in the bylaws to happen every year or make it some sort of, like, long-lasting thing, it's obvious that any sort of, like, risks and challenges need to be faced, like, now, today, tonight, tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. There's obviously a lot of emotion in this room. And um, I think, from my experience, for the most part, they're not personal. They really aren't, you know. Um, but we have to always, in order to maintain agency amongst ourselves, we always have to keep those in leadership at their full responsibility and capacity as well, right? So in order to move forward, and I think we can all agree here that it hasn't been working at all. I think from your end and from ours, obviously, we wouldn't be in here. And so I guess when I say the resolutions, we probably aren't going to come up with them now, but maybe at least you can resolve to give us that sort of meeting where we have, let's say, I don't know, five members from every school and the entire board of trustees sitting in one room with like publicly streamed, published minutes um, that can also serve to say that like we're willing, you know, the school, everyone is willing to take the chances they need to take in order for this place to survive and not, you know, hide behind um, like confidential spreadsheets.
And can you give us a little bit of feedback? Mm -hmm. from the well, I mean, it's very dangerous for me to speak because the board is 20 some odd people. I can't say something that's going to reflect what the whole board thinks. We got your back. You talk, <laughs> you talk about representation on the board, what the benefit of that is if you don't vote. Well, it's a communication benefit. You see firsthand what's going on, you hear what the discussion is, and there is some benefit. Voting takes it another level, and that's better, but again, it's one vote. It's not going to influence or change necessarily what the board does, but it's, an, it's, it's certainly something I personally wouldn't have an objection to. But the board as a whole has to decide how far they want to go. Not every school has student representation on the board. Some schools do. We'll bring the board here. Um, so, yeah, well, what I'm saying, it's not like it's automatic. The school decides whether they think that's an appropriate move or not. And this the board. We are the school. Decides. So, can you tell? I mean, I've watched the interview actually twice, like in completion, um, and I've wanted to transcribe it actually because I learned a great mm -hmm. deal from just the moment that you came in here and decided to show up and speak for the body. What are the reasons or what are the specific like particulars as to why students cannot have access? Like what subjects are the students not privy to and why? Um, it, it just seems very, very secretive as to what you guys you know do. No, it's not necessarily well, you mentioned secret. danger, so I kind of I mean I I I, 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 I I'm being very pragmatic in the sense that I mean, I'm being very pragmatic in the sense that I understand that there's things that we, m maybe if I knew what they were, we shouldn't be privy to. But can you right. tell me why we can't? I mean, tell well, me it's why easy, we can't. It's easier to give an example with faculty representation. The faculty has a union, there's negotiation with the union, the board discusses what the approach is going to be. You can't have a faculty member sitting on the board while you talk about what your negotiation strategy is. So, yeah, but it's not a hundred things that they shouldn't be privy to. There'll be isolated cases where something, if we're discussing, for example, a change in the curriculum, do uh, you necessarily want a student to get wind of they're thinking of doing this or eliminating that? Yes. But they're only, well. Can you explicate those with precision? You need to know what's going body? on, but, but you can't necessarily be part of all the decisions. Can, you, can, can that be explicated? Because who's going to do that? You're going to represent one student who's going to represent all of the students? We asked for more than five students. Well, I think you see that. That same apprehension that you have towards that student, we have towards the president. Why is he representing the whole school when yeah. he actually doesn't even the ideal of the that's school? That's his job. That's his job. Why? We have problems with it, but that's his job. That's, yeah. you know, that's the way it is. We're doing Why? Better. Why? Why is that the way it is? Well, he only has to represent because he gets paid. We get to represent because we really care. But he's not even he representing. He doesn't represent. He doesn't represent ourselves. We we that, that's your there are 100 people in the room. That's there are 430 we have something people that signed an official petition, which perhaps illegally went out to all parents in the school, all alumni in the school, all faculty, and all students without that email database, an unofficial petition has thousands of signatures. How many students? He does not represent. How many students do you know? So far, 212 personally came here physically <coughs> with with the conditions that by coming here, they're trespassing, came and signed a petition. They put themselves in, you know, <coughs> judiciary trouble. Well, it's something that the board obviously has to look at and consider. That's certainly a lot of impact. Wait. So you will you will look at this and it will be considered. The board has to look at all of this. They have it in the past. Well, you actually we wouldn't know. Sorry. You said <laughs> it this is a very important moment in the history of the school. This is not an ordinary operating decision mm -hmm. that you kind of delegate, you know, worry about. This is a decision that everybody on the board, the president, has to look at extremely carefully. You've got to consider, one of the reasons I'm going to be here is to listen so I get a better understanding of exactly what the range of issues are. So, but it has to be considered, no question. But it has to be considered that, I mean, I said personally that mm -hmm. if these sort of resolutions that have actual impact get passed, I will move from 0% to 1% and it will only increase. Right, but you can't, the other thing is that like we're all very, very intelligent in this room, you know, and we're all here in a very selfless manner. Um, and you can't fool us either, you know. So we'll know 
I mean, we'll absolutely know whether these things are actually effective measures or they're just things to temper our, our patients, you know? And, and they're giving you the chance, too. I mean, I'm willing to cross my name off that list. I am. As well as my mother and my father and my older sister and my younger sister and my partner, blah, blah, blah. On and on and on. You know, this is this is the chance. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm putting all of my confidence in this moment, but I'm standing here to be totally honest. You know? Well, I'll tell you, nobody underestimates the capability and intelligence of this group. We've said it a hundred times. This is the strength of the school. So we have to listen to what the students have to say. Do you agree it that they've been minimized that everything in the past? It's going to get implemented, but we have to listen. To Can you, for the record, just say, do you think that the student voice has been minimized until this day? Well, minimize, I, I don't think any more so than other schools. They're saying, well, this is a different place. And it's all a question of who's governing the school at a given point in time. Some have had closer relationships with the students and listen more carefully. Others are more detached and more aloof from students. It's hard to make a general, general statement. I don't want a general statement. I want a very specific statement. Well, I can't judge. Well, I have no other. Well, I think, well, I think, I think, you've, I think you've heard Don Blauai speak to us. Do you think that that's the correct way of addressing the student no. body? No. Okay. That's what I'm addressing. Thank you. Um, so you've been very you know, patient and respectful and listen to everyone's opinion. And there's been a lot of comparisons from you, uh, President, and the other trustee members, and students to other schools and what they do. Um, no other school, I, I think a lot of people can agree with this, would have 10% of the student body, 100 people, which 100 people making up 10% is just ridiculous anyway. That's how small and special Cooper is. Inside a what? Uh, a 15 by 15 room packing it at 1 o'clock in the morning, two days before the end of the semester, where people still have projects, finals, countless deadlines. And the fact that you're standing here to listen is really, really inspiring. But you don't need just inspiration. We need action. And that's it. So, so you can listen, but please don't let this fall on deaf ears. <laughs> On the, the resolution I'd like to see that more than any other, I want tonight it confirmed that there will be a meeting between a certain number of student representatives and the entire board of trustees that will have some sort of public presence. And I think, I mean, without that, I honestly don't, I, I can't see this moving forward because the thing is, as Steve just mentioned, we have been deeply inconvenienced. I mean, like I can speak to the thesis class, like everything's a total mess. And so I don't, it's, it's, I think it's imperative for the board to do the same in order to make that happen. public recourse, pub, either either uh, published minutes or live stream or, I mean, whatever. I mean, at, at least at, at least for it to be broadcast to the community, the Cooper community. So that everybody, so that everybody, not just the students, not just the trustees, everybody in that meeting is accountable. Right. And the occupier has asked for this on Friday, actually, and it hasn't been acknowledged. So are you saying every mm -hmm. board meeting no, 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 so all of them coming up in the very near future. It would be nice if it was after Wednesday or Thursday when Grazer did. But, um, but yes, in the very, very, in the, in the coming, I would say, two weeks, which is a reasonable amount of time. From each school, 15 students. To have an open discussion with published minutes and or live stream to the Cooper Union community. About restructuring the government. With, with meeting minutes published, I think the students should submit their um, their objectives before I think form I'm, the, what I'm getting at if you can't realize is that to formalize these things into record I think will go a long way because again speaking to the accountability that everyone's seeking that's the way that we do it you know that's the way people do it organizations mm -hmm. do it so well students do it yeah that's so, exactly no, I, what I I'm suggesting it's exactly. 
video streams or open <coughs> minutes that are signed also because I do remember speaking to certain administrators in school that even their frustration when they have to present something at a board of trustees meeting is they can't sign off on the minutes to even like say that what's being ratified into record is what they actually presented you know I mean that's I think that's probably the biggest structural problem here where there's a kind of a lack of agency which is something we're taught from the day we walk into the school I want to it's the first thing that we're taught and we're continuing to be held to until they graduate and beyond. So, um, I, mean, I think that's, I talked a lot, so I don't think it's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. watch any of the live stream over the past week? And can I ask why it is that you didn't come up here for five days? If you step down, I will leave your office. Oh, wait, it won't be your office. Will you ever, will you ever consider stepping down out of your own will, or will is the only way out of, through the board? Um, do, you, do you think you're bigger than this whole institution? They don't. It's not unanimous. They say it's unanimous, and we've heard that it's not. Mark. You can't keep using that. Was that vote scheduled for December 5th, or did the board pull it out of its ass to randomly support you after students held another intervention like this? The only places where that unanimous vote of no confidence has been employed are in student actions against them. It's part of the silencing that Mike was looking for. Yeah, the vote of confidence, sorry. The unanimous support for you from the board. It has only been used in the context of student actions trying to have this discussion to shut them down. I have more trouble your unanimous support of the vision that the board has proposed ever since you got here. And I don't, the board is a complex group of individuals and 
you know, few of whom have joined us, but most of them remain unseen, so we don't have any way to address them. But it shouldn't fall on <coughs> uh, um, Mr. Murkowski over here to, to go back to the board and try to bring them over to see us. I feel like the president of the school should be uh, realizing the disjunct that's happening in <coughs> the school and organizing that meeting. Uh, that, 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 that the meeting that, that was referred to that, that, Yeah, that we just did. So I guess yeah, I, I, the president I of the school like should, should be someone with an academic vision, which I, I had a lot of confidence when you came here because of your very different background. You're not a business person. Yes. Yes. Can well, I'm you know, I was optimistic. And I thought that the president is someone who comes in, the board is trying to manage the finances of the school. The board thinks they have a donor over here. The board thinks that this is a good investment. The board thinks they need to generate sustainable income. They're managing financial <coughs> issues, mostly. Mismanaging. They might be mismanaging, but that's their prerogative. <laughs> the, president, the president comes in. The president is someone who has an academic background, who understands that the value of the institution is not uh, the same as the value of a business. And that even if you do look at it as a business, that its primary asset is the quality of the education it delivers. Whenever it's brought up that this plan, the tuition plan, will severely devalue the quality and the, the amount of incoming applicants, and we've had some pretty incredible testimony tonight, it's brushed off as, yes, this is a challenge that you know that we're we're addressing. It's not a challenge. It is the Achilles heel of the plan you are proposing. To to not understand that is to be looking with blindness. I don't I don't I agree. We don't have a lot of plans forward right now. You know we don't have a lot of solutions. But that includes the tuition plan that you're proposing. It is not financially feasible. And as someone with, with an educational vision and background, I, I would expect you not the board, but, but you to be able to see that and to convince them that the only way to save this school is to realign it with its critical mission, to realign it with its, with its place in this time, and then move forward in getting, through that statement, the funds necessary to push us to 2018 and beyond. That's what I would like to see in a president. And I think now is the moment we need a new president and yes. it could be you. No. 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 But listen, I don't. I'm not. I don't. I'm not getting personal about this. I really think this is a, a time someone needs to step up. And if it I isn't going to be you, it's going to be someone else. I think if you want it to be you, the opportunity you have is to turn out, turn around that tuition policy, and that is something that could show us the kind of leadership that you have with the board to turn their opinions around. If that was their opinion to turn their opinion around and to inspire a whole room to get behind the idea of free education. Otherwise, you have no reason to be our president. Calculate 
every potential future outcome to such a degree that, that you should have total authority in preventing any of those outcomes from potentially occurring, I think it is highly challenged by the failed uh, visions that have been proposed over the past 10 years. Not you personally, but do you understand what I'm saying? This, you can't treat your analysis as if it is an absolute fact. You have to respect. I think that the, uh, we would everything we say. So wouldn't you step out of the way and, and let the finances be handled by each of the individual schools? I mean, no, but, that, but that actually was the. That's no, not you it. gave them the responsibility, but you didn't. You you gave them you gave them the responsibility. So the agents. But you didn't give them the agents. No. 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 You didn't. You threatened them. You threatened. To close I never mean, that each school is given a target, and they can achieve that by by reimagining. By having costs, which is achieved by some of the programs. Uh, all of those were possible ways of achieving that. So that is under their, their coercion with a warped vision of the school. Not on the terms of the What they said when they when they said that they wouldn't is that they couldn't support any plan that included tuition. Am I wrong? Is that the group plan? Yeah, I could speak to that. <laughs> yeah. What happened was is that we did all the academic work that was demanded of us through a kind of coercion. And uh, when we came to the end of our work, which I think was actually quite brilliant, and the president will acknowledge that, I we did come up with very creative and interesting plans. But at the end of the day, we realized that it was like a, a sort of a Trojan horse, that once it entered into the culture of the school, it would transform that vision, that mission. And so we voted it down. Programs. What? The new programs? Were the new programs, the donut model. We actually didn't have any, we didn't really believe in it, ultimately. We saw it as a, a false promise without, without any actually distrusted of you at that moment. But when, when we were punished, when our early decision uh, mandate was taken from us, and when the closure of the art school was threatened, and we had to bring these programs back to the Board of Trustees and the President, we realized that we were not, you know, that we were functioning in a very, very different uh, idea of communication, that we were not players any longer. And so, Earlier in the evening before I left and now I'm back, um, you asked, uh, a student asked, how would you deal with the healing process? How would you deal with the dissent that's taking place in this institution? What would you do as a leader if, in fact, you had that chance to be the leader of, that, of this new institution? How would you deal with that? And I wanted to ask that question. How would you deal, would you, would you, would you still have this vindictive, uh, you know, kind of uh, idea of, of punishing a school that stood up for itself. Would you respect the school? Would you respect the school? Uh, it's a beautiful school. And uh, I regret that it was perceived as ridiculous. It wasn't perceived. It wasn't perceived. It was a fact. Well, let me answer the question. They, it's not funny. They, uh, the board's view was that if we can't have a, a way to close the gap, then, then another class of four years, you know, be funny. But Jamsha, that was promissory money. It was promissory. It was like monopoly money. It wasn't real money. You wanted the promise of that revenue, but you didn't want to deal at all with the conflict of the mission, which we supported. You know? Well, it, I understand that, but, uh, you know, sometimes when you use the example of, uh, the union was a safety uh, I mean, it was, well, uh, Victoria, I just had another it's iceberg, not and that's tuition. Like, well, you're derailing the conversation. Jamsha, there's a narrative of excellence and sinking ship. These are repetitive narratives that continually 
prevent a dialogue for the protection and the future of the school. It, it, it's a real problem. It's language. We don't believe that's the problem, that there is this investment in what we represent in our classrooms. Our classrooms are where this meritocracy takes place. It's the contract between the faculty and the students. And in that classroom, something so extraordinary takes place that despite all of the troubles that have been going on in the past two years, when we go to class together, we still engage in learning. And that learning is special. It's part of the mission and the dream that's, that, that Peter Cooper um, provided for this institution. It can't be sold in this way. Now, if, there ha if, if the school reaches this kind of titanic situation where it's about to hit the iceberg of financial you know, uh, collapse, why couldn't you come to us and explain it to us? Why couldn't you talk to us two years ago and explain this whole situation where we might have been able to come to an understanding of a plan? But that is not how this board and this president worked. We went through these series of co coercions and meetings and elaborate you know, obfuscations about power struggle. This is not about power struggle now. This is about the protection of the city. You know, it, it's a very different story than that. And so that is what the problem is. The problem is, is that it's not really about power. It's about, it's about cooperation and communication. And I'm really glad you're here tonight. And I feel somewhat trepidatious because I wonder what will happen when the other shoe hits the ground in terms of the sort of culture of punishment and anger and vindiction. We are here to really protect the mission of the school, and we believe in it. If it means that we have to make concessions, I think that everyone here understands that there's a possibility of making concessions. But at the same time, we cannot engage in these, in these draconian politics. That's why these young, wonderful, heroic students are talking about the change in governance. We need to change the governance structure of the school so that we can plan together and protect the school. Could you, yeah, could, you could you respond? Could you respond to that, please, Jamshed? Before you go, we all have lives to go back to. It's two in the morning, and I have a life too. Yeah, Could you respond to that? Before we leave, I think it would be a really good idea not to respond to me, but to this whole evening that's gone through its various permutations of history and teaching and all sorts of different, can we just maybe talk about what we're facing right now and a way to make a, this future? Well, you could do either, but I think it's probably, you could do them together. And I think that it's, it's something that's quite reasonable in a way. It's about a culture. It's about a culture that the school represents it is a beacon. It is a beacon in the United States, in fact, in the world, of free education, of merit, of students that are unlike other students, and the contract that takes place in our classrooms is not for sale. It really can't be for sale. So. Well, um, Bobby, I, I agree with that. I agree with all of that. Um, mm -hmm. When I came, my concern was that the magnitude of, of the crisis was so great that it had to be solved. In the uh, it, it, it's not a great job. I actually may not have seen this. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a general person. And uh, I think that what I've had to do in the last two years 
in some sense who I am really because having to move so fast in a draconian way, yes, uh, is sometimes uh, uh, what one has to do, we are going to run out of money, we are not going to be able to issue And uh, I recognize colleges and universities in particular uh, are not institutions that can or should change that rapidly because culture carries a little over time and it's very precious. And I, I certainly respect that and I'm certainly aware throughout that this was uh, that this was not going to be a good thing. Now, I, I know you don't like the metaphors, uh, but um, when, when you're given a task, it's just in something that's so out of whack, or else you'll have to stop issuing the paycheck on a certain day, it has an effect on you. But you I understand that, but the, the sort of replacement of these words, excellence, for mission, it just doesn't, it doesn't uh, work. We can't have you know, that excellence. We were in the Senate today, and there was a statement read by, I think it was, it just said that, the way you said that, excellence, I think so. Um, and the statement read was a vote in the context of the party. I mean, I think that it's, I think that it's very important that your ideal is to continue what you perceive to be the excellence of a university education, especially given the culture, the current culture in the United States, where students are not students, but they're clients. The other thing is, is that we have never admitted the parents of our students. Our students have come to us through our, in the art school anyway, through the, which I, I, I'm, on, I'm less familiar with the admissions process of the admission of the engineering school. But what's always struck me is, is that there's a, 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 a contract between the student and the institution. It hasn't been, we haven't known about what parents make. We haven't known about their incomes. Their parents, the parents have not been present in this process. And that's a very unique sort of situation where students who are actually the ones who struggle as high school students to achieve the Cooper Union. The, the, the Cooper Union is an achievement in the United States and in the world that is so unusual. It, it is so rare. And it can't be quantified in that way. And I believe that that narrative is a narrative that can be told to benefactors, even in this even in this moment where we are sinking or all of these narratives around our ruin are, are real, and I believe you. I don't distrust that part of, of what your narrative is. I actually understand it. I understand, I understand your sincerity in relation to your CEO relationship to being the president. But there's another thing that's missing, and that is, is that this narrative can be told. And the United States and this culture that we're living in with this President Obama and with this and student debt crisis and all of these situations this is an opportunity for the school to lead. It's to lead the culture. So we are here willing to work with you, to willing to, to take this institution to a new place where we're not only the Cooper Union in New York City, but we continue to be this beacon in the United States of a society, you know, a beacon for education and for what education actually means without the client base. There's a real difference between when the client is no longer the student, when the student is the student, and where knowledge and learning and art becomes the curriculum. There's a real difference with that. And this school has been socially radical, has been that beacon for, for 150, 150 years, years by doing the same and thing. And we're living in a reactionary change. society, a society despite <laughs> our president, our noble president. We're living in a very reactionary society, a conservative society. And you're taking on a, a position that has so much, both symbolic and ideological and educational meaning. And to drop that now would just be a terrible crisis. It would be a crisis for many, many people. Well, Bobby, that's very inspiring. And thank you. Uh, it, is, it is truly inspiring. I would love to follow through on that.
but you need to the doors are always that. open. We've had so few years to say and like something close to that, and you can't come close to it, and that's why we're all here, and nothing has changed. I have no I, I walked into this meeting late, and I'm really upset at what, what I walked into because I don't think we should have to be having a meeting two years into your presidency about how you should lead your presidency. I just want to say for the record that I signed that because I have no confidence in you, none. No confidence that you can do anything on that board. No confidence that anything in this room will change how you lead this school. None. But at the same time, in all fairness to the president and to John Shedd as an individual, as an educationalist, who has many experiences and much experience in other universities, if we're to create a moment where we can, I mean, I, I also, but I, I signed this petition. But I signed it mainly because I am in despair. I'm in despair. When one signs something in despair, it's a very different kind of concept of, of signing something in total blind rage or anger. I am in despair because I love, I have devoted my part of my life and my artistic practice to the school and to see the kinds of decisions that have been made with the board and the kinds of information that are slowly being divulged through the New York Times and with the brilliant blogs of Slavin. You know, these kinds of revelations, I realize, of course, that you walked into this whole situation. And I understand and, and, and actually um, have sympathy for the position that you have taken on. But at the same time, the specialness of this condition and the ideological moment, the promise of this place at this time must have support. It can have support. It can have benefactors. It can have an intellectual and cultural um, uh, constituency. It has, it has to have a constituency. I'm part of the art world. The art world has a constituency of thinkers, of intellectuals. They need to be included in this culture. This culture does not include them. There are many people that would come to Cooper because of what we do and what we represent. And there, there's been a tremendous disconnect between what we represent in the culture of the United States and what we do. That narrative has to be told. And I think that if you want to take that on, that narrative can be the narrative that you state your presidency under if you continue to be president. Otherwise, I, you know, otherwise, you know, this, this situation is a stalemate. There has to be a change. It's a stalemate. It's a stalemate between a community and a well-meaning, but, 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 uh, but in, in some way, uh, I would say, a, 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 a very interesting and, and prominent man who does not understand. That's how it's being read. You do not, we're, we're seeing you as not understanding the priorities of the institution. We see you as understanding the numbers. We see you as understanding the direness of the situation. We see we, we don't see you, I think, in an uncompassionate way. But there's a disconnect, and that disconnect has to be mended. And I think then we, then we can go on. I really do. I think we can go on if that disconnection of value, its value, can be amended. So I only hope to go on. It's value. <laughs>
the springboard to start a new culture, a culture of philanthropy throughout the whole city in the world. It will give people the confidence that people can change things if they stand up. And, and if not, we can do it without you. Be here, you should definitely come back. Definitely come back tomorrow. Our door is open. You can come here. <laughs> <It's always laughs> open. open door policy. <laughs> Unless they try to block it. Again. Okay. 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 You can come to me. You're going to use our Just walk in. Your president is here. Choose one. John Cuba. John Cuba. John Cuba. John Cuba. John Cuba. You can find me a response to his email. Yeah. 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 Ye